Well, um, I think the first thing would probably be to just hop into a private match real quick. And okay. we can kind of go over some exercises and stuff that I'm telling everybody else to kind of work on as far as like dribbling and to get like the control down. Um, okay. So I guess, yeah, you can just spectate me for like a minute. Okay. I think I might need to hop in and then hop out. Oh, yeah. I'll wait till the countdown starts and I'll just hop out. Yep. All right. You should be able to see my POV. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. Um, All right. So I'm going to basically just start from the ground up. Okay. So like as far as like some people that can't even really pick up the ball or carrying the ball, normally what I would recommend is to just get, you know, hit the ball to one side, go ahead of it and turn around and then just try to bump up the ball. You don't have to jump or do anything. You just basically run into the ball. And whenever you drop it again, you just go ahead of the ball where it's rolling. You turn around and you just try to drive into it. Then, um, you know, it's a lot of a lot of the initial ball control and like learning how to dribble um is basically just trying to keep your car in the inner circle so right. and you know matching the ball speed because if you get too far ahead of it obviously you're going to let it drop behind you um and if you start using too much boost like what i see a lot of people doing when they start to dribble is they they tend to boost a lot and they'll just go like wild with it and it get makes your movements really big as Randy says so like yeah, I would recommend as much as you can during any dribble training to try to not use boost whatsoever. Um, so one of the first things that I tell people is, yeah, okay, yeah, you can pick up the ball and, uh, you know, get it on top of your car like this. You go ahead of it. Uh, one exercise instead of, like, seeing how long you can keep it on your car is to actually try to go from goal to goal and pick up the ball in your car and go from, you know, do lengths of the field, right? Um, okay. Then after that... You know you can try to learn to pick up the ball off the ground on the side so instead of going ahead of it you'd get on the side of the ball and you'd basically just turn underneath it so you'd go to the right or left and you're going to be doing a lot of this initially in terms of uh you know going either too far um some people tend to go behind the ball too much so that way when they turn into it it just goes ahead of them like that you never actually get the, the pop that you need um so this will really teach you to get of like where to go to match the ball speed and you should actually be able to pick up the ball off the ground without any boost whatsoever um and then if you can kind of continue and kind of uh build on the things that we've kind of been practicing so far then you can learn to pick up the ball and just keep turning into it and you keep pushing it like this and try to keep it off of the ground and do like little circles like this and again, using no boost. You can see I have not dropped the ball yet, and I've not used a single boost. Wow. And then you can build on that and try to cross it over left and right and do like little figure eights or do circles on the left and right sides. But again, the key is really using not using boost because that'll right. really get you comfortable with no boost dribbles, which you'll see a lot of, you know, you'll actually be able to do a lot more no boost dribbles than you think, especially in ones. Um, and ones and twos where like you have more space on the field then once right. you you know if you apply like no boost when you when you're dribbling you know then you use your boost when you need to flick it or get it around an opponent that's when you use it um, so you'll be more efficient that way if you can kind of ball carry without wasting a ton of boost you know so um, then at that point the last thing would be like okay now we can pick up the ball we can do like little figure eights we can do like these little circles and things like that we can manipulate the ball we can do these little turns. Um, the next thing is actually side foot flicks. So a lot of people, when they try to shoot on net, is they try to flick it forwards like that. But I'm actually getting rid of the ball that way. A good way to practice flicks is to actually do what we're doing already, where you just turn into the ball, but you just follow through with it, and you side foot flick. This will, especially if you do it without boost, it'll really teach you to get drive your car through the ball. A lot of people think that, okay, well, all dr all flicking is is just getting it on the position of your car and then just double, pre double pressing your X button or your jump button to flick it. Well, it's not always that simple. Sometimes you actually need to follow through, um, you know, follow through the ball with boost. Sometimes you need to slow down or break, um, you know, so it's, it'll really teach you to how to, like, 
drive your car through the ball instead of just being like, oh, it's in a position now where I can double tap X and now I flick it. You know what I mean? It'll really get that extra control. So the side foot flicks, like if I have the ball and I'm trying to shoot an orange net, you know, you don't always have to have forward progression. So even if somebody's coming at you, you know, you may not be able to shoot it on net right away, but you can see how even when I'm flicking it over, I'm actually able to follow it. So that way, if somebody yeah. goes flying by me, all I got to do is just dribble it in like that. Um, okay. So the side foot flicks will actually keep you in control the whole time. Um, and actually, I used to, again, I'm just kind of showing my accolades here. I used to be the world record holder for the longest dribble. And in that video that I have on my YouTube channel, 99% um, of that time is actually me dribbling with zero, like using zero boost, basically, of just driving around at um, driving speed. So wow. just uh, that's kind of like my whole spiel in a nutshell, right? of like just being able to pick the ball up on the car, then being able to keep it on your car, you know, through the going down the length of the field, and then also being able to turn with it, you know, you kind of build on all these like little things. Then if you're able to turn, you know, with the ball, then you can kind of follow through with, with flicks. So I think when people get fixated on shooting and they want to shoot the ball in the net, they get rid of the ball too fast. And when you're going for control and then you just front flip flick, it's like, okay, well, you had control. Unless you're going to flick on the net, it may not always be the best idea, especially if you get challenged in the midfield to front flip flick it. Because then if you get fake challenged, then you just give up ball possession, right? So, like, if I were to front flip flick here or try to shoot it on net, well, now I'm just getting rid of the ball. I can't challenge this anymore. I don't have ball control. So, yeah. So, if somebody challenges me here... I can basically back foot flick it or side foot flick it or whatever, right? I can do one of these. Well, now then I can just shoot on net. Okay. So especially in ones that that's really useful. You'll see if you ever watch any of my ones gameplay or anything like that, you'll see that that's that's my number one move actually is to just back foot flick it anytime somebody challenges me because then I can just challenge or shoot right away afterwards. So. What if they end up like uh, hitting you instead of the ball? Or like, you know, they were going sure. for the ball, but they ended up hitting you. Yeah, um, to be honest with you, uh, most of the time I find that, especially if you can side foot flick, because again, the point here is that you're not giving them ball control. So that even that side foot flick, if they hit you, it's still going to their side of the field, right? So if you can save the boost, you can more than likely than not be able to recover back and then be able to shoot on their net like that. Right. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, the idea being that, yeah, if, if somebody challenges you, even if they do hit you, you'd be, you'd put your recovery uh, training to use, then you'd still have a lot of boost if you're doing these dribbles right. So okay. that's um, that's kind of the gist of it. Does anything not make sense, or do you have any questions about anything I've said so far? No, no, it, okay. uh, it'd just be me doing it. But Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I'd say the biggest thing, though, in terms of, like, hard things that people have to learn if they can't really ball carry, it'd be doing these turns like this. Um, you know, it gets you really comfortable with the side of the ball and, like, really comfortable with pushing the ball around the, on the field. Especially if you can do figure eights like this, then your ball control will just skyrocket if you can do this and be able to turn it whenever you want. Like, then, at that point, you can try to aim for pads you know do circles around the field you know aim for whatever you want and being able to turn it with zero boost usage you know you, that's basically like full ball control at this point then the only thing is just getting rid of it or doing something with it you know anytime somebody challenges you because then yeah at this point then you'd have basically full ball control at any given point so yeah um, I don't think I really have a whole lot else to say, to be honest with you. A lot of it is just stuff that you're going to have to practice, right? And it's just a matter of, like, okay, where do you think you're at versus, like, what I've talked about so far. So, like, do you think you can, like, carry the ball on top of your car, like, down the whole length of the field? Yeah, I think I can do that. Okay. So then as far as doing, like, circles or figure eights or anything like this, like, especially with no boost? That would, yeah, that would, that would take a little bit of time, but I think I can get yeah. that down. Uh, I, actually, I had rainy, um... I had a problem with level uh, 12 on dribble overhaul and we spent like an hour doing that and oh, yeah. uh, he, he went ahead and had me go through the whole thing and he said it, it's weird it, usually it's the opposite but you're actually comfortable on the curves but when you're on the straightaways you freak out <laughs> <laughs> i gotcha 
Yeah, I think honestly, a lot of the workshop maps, you know, if you want to do them really, really fast, you boost through them. But like, especially on the straightaways and a lot of that stuff, I don't really boost a whole lot. Yeah, that is a, that has been something I've had to uh, really work on. Um, and I, what the problem was, and what Rennie found out, was I was pushing the brakes a lot. Gotcha. And so whenever I'd push the brakes, I would go too far ahead of me, and then I would have to boost to catch up to it. Then at that point, it's going too fast, right. and I'd have to restart it. So. I gotcha, yeah. Laying off the brakes and just not pushing the gas has helped me so much. Yeah. One thing I forgot to mention is actually that, um, you know, if you wanted to add a little bit more complexity to any of this stuff, you can, you know, once you start getting the ball on top of your car, you can always add drift into it. Something that I'm actually still working on. I'm not nearly as good as Randy is with that kind of stuff. You know, he's the drift king after all. So, but I feel like especially with drift catches and stuff like that, I'm pretty decent. But that's something that you can add to your arsenal if you feel like anything might be too easy. You know, if you're going down the side, down the length of the field and you want to turn around and maybe add a little power slide here and there, you know. So... Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really think I have a whole lot to say. I, we can, uh, I mean, I can let you hop in here and, um, you know, kind of try it out. But, um, yeah, I really just think a lot of that will be down to just you actually being able to do it or not and practicing. Okay. But I, right. one last thing I wanted to say just about this is that you can actually get pretty decent flicks. If you're really comfortable with flicking the ball, like, you can get some pretty powerful flicks. Like, I've actually been able to flick to the ceiling with a backflip flick before, like without any boost at all, basically standing still as long as you can get, you know, the good position. Like, I'm not moving very fast whatsoever, and you can get crazy flicks like that. <laughs> so, it's not always about going fast and trying to flick it as quick as you can, right? As long as you have control the whole time, you can basically flick anytime. That's really the killer difference. I like your car design, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> To be honest, I don't really watch I don't really watch football, so I'm not like into the Patriots. But I actually I like that Ooh. decal. It looks sick. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. All right. Let me. Start like right I now. might rock that, <laughs> even though I don't really watch like football at all. That's kind of it's kind of sick. There you go. Oh. I like the power slide attempt. Ah, shit. <laughs> I should have made I should have made this like unlimited time or something. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's okay. I can I can change it, but uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, the the ones they came out with last year for the NFL teams are pretty standard for the octane, but this sure. one, uh, yeah, I really like it. It's actually moving and stuff. You can tell that Psyonix has uh, maybe favorite teams if they're making the sicker decals for like their favorite teams. <laughs> well, I mean they're. The thing about it is they all have the same decal. It's just some teams just happen to look a little bit better because they're team colors. So. Ah, true. Okay. That, I didn't know that they're all the same. I just, uh, yeah. I don't, I have them all archived, so I never see them in my inventory anyways. I've never equipped them, so I don't really know any different. Yeah, they're all the same. Gotcha. Um, all right. Do I need to back out or do you? Uh, no, I, you can, I can change it. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, I'll let you kind of mess around for a minute here. Damn ball, it. ball cam. Ball cam every <laughs> time. Yep. That's also another thing I fuck up on is constantly having to worry about oh did i put it on ball cam is it all right. ball cam you know the one of the hardest things i ever did in rocket league was recently um my teammate demon uh challenged me to do the dribble overhaul with ball cam on the whole time so you think about doing this kind of dribbling you know like when you dribble with ball cam on your car your camera just goes wiggity whack it's like yeah. on top of you and it goes like backwards and all that kind of shit and it was awful but i almost completed it <laughs> it was insane. Oh my god. Well, shit. Okay. The, the thing about it is, I know Coach Curtis has said it's it can be useful, and I know Luke has mm -hmm. as well, because a lot of the pros, whenever they go to dribble, they won't, uh, a lot of the times it's so second nature that they won't even have ball cam turned off. They'll have right. it on. Yeah. 
Exactly. Well, especially at that speed of play, you know, every single button press and every like millisecond counts. So I think the difference between them, you know, they can have ball control, pretty much the same ball control, you know, either way. So like, why would you, you know, you can save your thumb a button press and you can save your, your brain from having to su even subconsciously think about switching, you know, camera modes. Yeah. I think at that high level, it does kind of matter. Um, I'm actually curious. What's your aerial and ground sensitivity? Mm. Uh, controls. So I got steering at 1.03 and aerial at 1.05. Oh wow, you're you're pretty low then. Basically 1.0, right? 1.05. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, I, I think I meant to change that to 1.30, oh. not 1.03. I think that might be where I was messing up. Gotcha. Um, I was just curious because I have always rocked 1.0 on everything on both. So I've never even really tried anything higher, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I can't really comment. I was just more more or less asking you. Uh, what well, before I had started the program, I actually had a uh, a coach. Oh sure. Um, that was SSO, and he had told me, uh, shit. He's like, okay, these are my settings. You know, you probably probably good a good idea to go and get used to them. And dude had aerial and steering sensitivity at five. Oh my god. Yeah. And so I rocked that for well till I joined the program and Luke uh, made that video. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Back it up, chair. Back it up, chair. Back it up, Terry. Back up, Terry. Back it That's up. what it is. Yeah, I always say chair because it's chair. a fucking chair that malfunctions. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you're actually pretty decent on the uh, on the straightaways, just from doing you know down the field like this. Um, yeah. Well, can, can you try to do a circle? Like put it on one side oh. of your car and see how see how yeah you know, that goes. Oh. You say kind of hard. You don't have a whole lot of speed there. There you go. Oh okay. Oh, uh, it's yeah. <laughs> Very bouncy. I'll say that. But yeah. at least, um, I think honestly, if that would be something that I would, I would have you focus on would be trying to get, trying to do the turns and stuff like that. Cause yeah, you can see the ball is kind of very bouncy right now. Um, and the kind yeah. of control that you want to be able to like side foot flick and everything like that, and to be able to maneuver it, you want to have like that total control, right. Of right. being able to turn it and having the confidence of like having like every touch, you know, be really good. There you go. I was gonna yeah, say. I, I, I was gonna say. Don't be afraid to keep turning into it like that. Um, like even if you, even if the ball goes on the other side, like yeah, just keep turning, keep turning. There you go. You can always go back and you know pick it up again, but um, yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. Did you have a question? I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh well. What? Oh, oh, see, there we go. Ooh, that was good. Uh, the problem that I have is the uh, like as soon as I get the ball on top of my car in any type of situation i'm just like okay now what i'm just like freaking out i'm like okay the opponent's right there what do i do the ball is the ball where <laughs> i need to be like I, so many things are going through my head and by the time sure. it comes to that moment i'm like oh fuck and then i just flick i don't know what i'm right. doing it, you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah uh, that's that's kind of like where i'm at like i just freak gotcha. out i don't know i don't know what the fuck to do you know even though i've practiced it it just you yeah, know, I got gotcha. you. I think honestly, um, I don't know if you have you watched um, the tilt module at all. I, I assume you have. I might, need, I might need to go back to it. I guess. Um, uh, so actually, and it's not even just for tilting. It's actually um, one of the good, the greatest points I actually got from that is the fact that even when you're tilted, right? When you're like just super angry at the game, you tend to fall back on the things that you're actually really good at because it, it is totally subconscious, right? So. 
I think like even if you're if you're not comfortable with like licks or if you're not comfortable with you know with, with, with certain mechanics right that's the stuff that you're not really gonna do like a whole lot you know especially when you're tilted it's not like you're just gonna bust out like a double reset out of nowhere right when you're totally pissed right it's gonna be the stuff that you're you know you're gonna fall back on the stuff that you're really good at and i think the key to this game you know is practicing mechanics where you don't have to think about it right so like you know, even if you're in a game and somebody's about to challenge you or if you're not sure what to do, I think once you are at the point where you don't have to worry about the ball control and worry about flicking and stuff like that, you can basically just be like, okay, I see a guy here. I want to flick him. Okay, now, like, basically then all you have to focus on is when to do it. Right. Right. So that way it eliminates a lot of that processing from your brain, right, where you don't have to even really think about it. So that's where like a lot of this stuff comes in and it's not just to learn like <laughs> just to learn you know flicks just for you know to be able to flick it to the moon right obviously you want right. to be able to apply it to a game and i think that's part of the reason why like yeah higher rank players are higher ranked is the fact that they don't have to think about a lot of the stuff that they're doing it's just they make instead of making the decision on what to do they make a decision on when to do it <laughs> right. you know so i think there's a Total, ooh, there's a good one. Just breaks there, whoops. There you go, that's fine. Honestly, I think you're already looking better just from, like, even when we started, if I'm being honest. A little bit more comfortable as well, so. I, th I think so, yeah. I like the yeah, little drifts uh, and stuff, too. That's good. Um, yeah. All right. I know uh, this doesn't pertain to the car control and stuff like that as far as dribbling goes, but do you mind if I kind of go over a little bit of a spiel in terms of, like, wall stuff and like air drags and that kind of thing because I, I can actually, actually i was actually talking to prag about that okay uh, earlier today because like my wall stuff is i actually found i found a training pack that was uh because like i don't know if you can see where yep. my car is but, yeah i can so like as in uh i would say as a defensive position the yep. ball's coming up on the wall like yeah. right here yep. popping off hitting it yeah you know like, usually what i can do is like maybe like six times out of 10, I can just like barely hit it. Sure. And it can like kind of go towards the teammate, but. Right. Uh, I gotcha. Trying to, yeah. So I finally found something where I could actually practice hitting it towards the net if I wanted to, or if I wanted to pass, I could pass. Okay. Awesome. Um, because like on the wall stuff is just God awful for me. <laughs> okay. Well, do you mind if I go through like my whole spiel here for a minute? Yeah. yeah on this, I can kind of turn it into a little bit on like the air or the ground control as well. Um, but, all right, so I think, um, it would probably be best if you just spectated me for just another minute. Yeah, yeah that's what I was about to do. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so I'm just going to kind of go over what I call, like, the universal setup. It might sound a little pretentious, but, uh, hear me out. <laughs> so, this would be the same setup that you use for, like, air dribbles to ceiling shots to passing to your teammates to getting rebounds, jump resets, all that kind of shit, right? So then this kind of comes back to why like dribbling and like being able to handle the ball really well on the ground comes into play because obviously I'm not going to be able to get like a crazy air dribble to the net. You know, if I have a setup like this, right, where I'm just flying into the backboard, right? It all comes down to the control on the ground and your setup on the ground that starts everything, right? So I'm going to go over like this universal setup per se of like what you should do for plays. Like even something like that is perfect. So the main thing is that, you know, like when you're dribbling, I tend to just try to have car cam on, you know, and then you can kind of dribble and, you know, as you're manipulating the ball on the ground, you kind of get your angle that you want to go up on the wall. Um, I tend to drive at the wall. And then once I realize, okay, I'm at an angle where I want to go, I tend to turn ball cam on, on the ground. So that way it's less for me to think about when I'm in the air. Um, right. So I'll be at this point, I'll just turn ball cam on. And then I prefer to have like one to two car lengths of space between me and the ball. And I don't normally break. 
I normally just let go of the gas. So even something like this is perfect. And uh, I'm sure, as you know, the uh, you want to hit this on the flat side of the wall. So you want to hit it above the line, above this line on every map uh, when you can. Because if you hit it on the corner here, you're more than likely not going to hit it to the ceiling. Right. So with that being said, I'm just going to keep building on that. So I'm going to dribble it. Once I get my angle, I turn ball cam on. Okay, now I go straight. What I see a lot of people do is they do this. And I don't know if you could tell what yeah. I did there, but they'll try to turn. And they try to, like, hit it, and they try to have that forward progression. And yeah, they want to go like, straight towards the net already. Yeah. yeah, which is not always good because then you're not going to get the height you want. The whole point of going on the wall is to go higher than your opponent and to make it harder for them to read. So what the hell is the point of going on the wall if you're just going to bring it straight to them? <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to keep going then. So I'm dribbling. I got my angle. I'm going to turn ball cam on. I'm going to get my space, and then I'm going to hit it on the wall. I tend to actually boost up the wall vertically to hit it. So I will basically drive like this, and I'll boost. And after you hit the ball, I tend to jump like maybe, I don't know, like a millisecond after that. But say, yeah, you want like a millisecond, like just a just slight. Slightly break. after you hit the yeah. ball. Yep. So then at that point, you're basically set up. As long as you don't turn and you don't do anything else, you're basically good to go as far as getting anything. Uh, oh, right. my camera is bugged. But um, so then once you get that set up in the air, it's, it should be unlimited time now. So we should be good. There we yeah, go. Is, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to basically show you like, obviously the differences then. Okay. If you have the same setup, well then obviously, yeah, I can follow after it. So if I hit it and I jump, well then obviously I, if I can boost towards the ball, I can get an air dribble going. Um, you know, if you wanted to pass to a teammate, might be something more like at your rank, you know, um, in terms of like, rather than going for like double resets or whatever. Um, the key here would be to just wait for like half a second after you hit the ball, jump out center and front flip into it. Okay. So the key here is that obviously like if your teammate is far away from the far away from you, say he's on the other side of the field, you kind of want to keep underneath the ball. Right, so a big thing here is going to be height. So I don't even have to flip. But the key thing is on like where you're hitting the ball. right? Because right. if I'm on the wall and I hit it down, I'm not really going to get it that far across the net. So I'm going to wait. Then if you can jump and air roll out and just hit it like that, that'd be a pretty decent pass at like lower ranks. Um, okay. So it's nothing complicated. It's just basically the same. If you can do the same setup every time, um, you know, then... If you can actually just follow it, air, aerial after it, and front flip, then, uh, you know, that's a pretty decent pass. Or, you know, if you're good enough, you can put it on net, then that'd be a pretty decent shot. And again, you can see here that the thing is the consistency, right, of being able to do this over and over again. And you can apply this to anything from doing rebounds to passing wherever. It's just wherever you want to aim. Um, then the same thing can be said for, like, ceiling shots and, like, air uh, or jump resets and stuff like that. I'd basically f go up to the net rather than trying to hit the ball directly. Um, oh, I can't hit the broad side of a barn unless I follow it, luckily. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know why I left the party, but okay. Um, so basically, I think you get the point at this point. Um, the setup is the same. It's just what you do with it after, uh, after, get, after you get in the air. Um, so one thing I will say about the wall stuff is, um, I tend to go up the wall, jump and tilt back. Um, and this is very, very important. So if, if you <laughs> remember anything out of anything I say is to just try to get you comfortable jumping off the wall and tilting your car back, because this already puts you at like a pretty easy position. So like if I have the ball, I jump and tilt back. And then if I do a little air roll just to correct myself so my wheels are on the ground, then you can see the motion already is that I'm already going towards the wall. If I jump, tilt back, and correct myself, I'm already going towards the middle of the field, either to pass to a teammate or going to the net to shoot it or whatever. Um, the same thing can be said as far as jumping and tilting back for things like, you know, matching the ball speed. Uh, one of the things, or matching the ball height, sorry. One of the things I tend to tell people is you know if you're in free play or whatever and you want to hit a ball like really high 
uh, or really hard, you want to jump, tilt back, and to meet the height of the ball to be able to shoot it. So jumping and tilting back is something that you'll use whether you're on the wall, on the ceiling, on the ground especially, to be able to get those really strong shots. So you can not only apply like the air dribbles and the wall setup and stuff like that to the wall, but you can apply it to the ground and just everyday shooting as well. So there's a lot to it um, in terms of like the setup and stuff. Okay. So, and like I said, it all starts from the setup, right? So. It may be a lot, but like the only part that was really complicated about that was just maybe the fact that I air rolled twisted a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, wasn't really necessary, yeah. but um, from a mechanical standpoint, it wasn't really a whole lot hard. It was basically just being able to, you know, point my nose at the ball and boost. Um, right. So, and again, that all just comes with the, uh, the setup being really, really consistent. Do you use both uh, left and right air roll? I do. I use a scuff PS4 controller with paddles on the back. So it uh, allows me to use, you know, air roll left and air roll right with my paddles. So, um, so yeah. Must be nice. Um, yeah, to be honest <laughs> with you, I actually, I only switched maybe a year and a half ago. Okay. I, I used to use a standard PS4 controller with uh, square as my, my air roll, like regular air roll. So I've, I've played in RLCS, I've played in tournaments, I've played in all that shit with just regular air roll like anybody else you know what i mean so okay a lot of this stuff still applies you know what i mean not like uh it's really a whole lot different um i guess one thing to say about the exercises and stuff like that because i didn't really have custom training packs when i was doing when i was learning this stuff but even just being able to go up the wall like this and then also being able to catch it right i'm using like these compound training techniques that we learn of being able to like go up the wall and then also being able to catch it and be able to make a play because then i'm back to dribbling right it's all it's all connected okay so, so then you can learn you know if you go if you dribble you get a good setup right and you're you practice your dribbling and you know you, you're really good at turning the ball so say i want to go up the wall here okay well now i drifted now i got my setup okay now i want to go for an air drag Okay, well, I don't always need to score it. I'm going to actually catch it. Then you can practice your catches too, right? And practice catching the ball. And again, now I'm back to square one. I'm zero boost dribbling or no boost dribbling. Get my angle. Again, you don't have to score. But it's just being able to do this. And then if you can follow it, do little tiny movements. I'm boosting. I'm not really boosting a lot. I can actually do a bunch of these over and over and over again with the same 100 boost if you're really efficient. Okay. And I hope that this this kind of shows, right? And I think my gameplay is a perfect example of that, of like, you know, if you practice this stuff and you're really good at the setups, you know, that's what really makes you different than anybody else, you know, or higher rank than like, you know, champ two versus like diamond two, right? Of just being, being more efficient and, you know, being a little bit faster and not having to think about all this stuff. Because like, honestly, I could do this stuff with one eye closed, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because <laughs> I practiced it so much. I bet you I have more hours in free play than most people have in the game. So, and again, I hope that that shows in like, you know, anytime we play in-houses or whatever that it, you know, it's, you know, I feel like I'm pretty consistent at stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much uh, don't want to play whenever you come in in-house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't blame you. I honestly, I tell the couple people already like, hey, Anytime anybody wants to 1v1 or I have, I was playing like 1v1 King of the Hill yesterday with some guys. And I think I went like 50, 30, like 30 or 50 rounds without losing. And oh they just God. kept swapping. And I said, honestly, guys, you have my highest respect because I can't go in a 1v1 without, you know, going down four goals without, without just like being done. <laughs> so anybody yeah. that can play and get their ass kicked and still play, want to play the game after that has my highest respect. <laughs> yeah. So I do not blame anybody for not wanting to play with me after they lose a match. Like, Dude, I'm, I'm I'm always up for the challenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's one thing about me. I I, I guess I've I've uh, I've gotten clapped by Luke twice in one v ones. I've got clapped by Rainy. 
once, yeah. I think, from one of the ones, and Curtis twice. I, yeah, it's all a learning experience, man. So yeah, you for take sure. Something from everything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, as far as like the shooting and stuff goes, that's what I, I see a lot of people do. I, in as far as my coaching and stuff goes, um, I've seen a lot of like lower rank players where they'll like they'll go for a 15, they jump at it, and then they front flip like that. Right? They don't get a lot of power. They're not hitting the ball with the front side of their car, you know. So if they want to hit the ball, they just do one of these. And they basically either hit the ball. I mean, some people do miss it, but like, that's not nearly as powerful as it could be, right? Right. You know, if you wanted to chip up the ball, well, if I can even freaking do it right now. But, um, you know, always just being able to jump, tilt your car back and match the ball height and just being able to front flip into it. I mean, yeah. that, that kind of uh, stuff is like the difference between like low level shooting and the high level shooting. Right. I've started to really focus on, uh, like whenever I'm going out for a shot, instead of flipping into it, um, looking at like hitting it with the corner of my car or the oh, front yeah. part of my car, you know, I, I mean, not that I always flipped into the ball, but I usually yep. just hit it with the front part of my car, let's say. Yeah. But uh, hitting it with the sides or the top two corners of my car have been really challenging. So that's what I've been working on the most. Sure. Uh, but, um, all right. I think, do you have any questions as far as, like, the rest of the stuff that I've talked about? Like, the wall setups, jumping and tilting back, anything like that? No, no. It, it's okay. all pretty, yeah. Makes a lot of sense, I'm sure. Um, again, I know you're not, like, you're not, like, gold, like, bronze silver level you know what i mean so like i understand that it's probably a lot of the stuff already you've heard and you you know it already makes sense to you well, but and i'll, I'll tell just... you the um the wall uh to air type stuff yeah. i actually had no idea like it was such a hard thing for me to figure out and so i watched uh there was there was some youtuber who did an interview with the guy who uh who invented the air dribble i can't remember oh the yeah, yeah yeah and he broke it down and like the biggest thing that I was messing up is that you had to wait just a little bit on the wall before you popped out. Yep. And that made the biggest fucking difference because like before I was just like, okay, I gotta make it to the ball again. But if you wait just a little bit, boom, you're right there in front of the ball. Like it's just right. automatic. Oh, okay. So I got one last thing to talk about then. Um, right. promise then after this, <laughs> I'll shut up. Um, so one last thing that I wanted to kind of show is my, I'll call it like my secret sauce, if you will. Um, secret sauce, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So obviously we know, like, uh, I've had a lot of people like, especially this re is, uh, related to recoveries. Okay. So like anytime you're in a game and you score, a lot of people tend to just drop their controller. They'll check their phone. They'll check Twitter or whatever. Right. Um, instead, what I like to do is use the goal explosion as a way to recover so you see how i'm air rolling and you'll see a lot of pros and a lot of high level players do this is that they use the goal explosion as like more practice so i purposely jumped so that way i could go to the ceiling i air rolled upside down to land on my wheels then i i basically speed flipped or side flipped or whatever on the ceiling to try to get back as quick as i can and you'll see me do that a lot like even in our in houses and stuff like that <laughs> where like i'm already backwards okay i do a half flip then i do a speed flip back right try to recover yep. you know try to simulate a game you never you know if you use those extra seconds and you practice things like wave dashes and half flips and things like that it all adds it, up it all does add up over time right i still do it all the time you'll still see pros do it anytime they're in the games and stuff like that and yeah they basically never drop the controller they always keep their hands warm you know you'll be ready for the next kickoff if you have to go for it <laughs> All that kind of stuff right. so yeah it's i'd say you know just having the attitude that okay i'm may have scored but like i can still learn and i can still practice things here and there you know that'll go a long way yeah. as well there was somebody that mentioned that in the video as well and i can't remember who it was Ooh. but I, I started using that time to practice my um air roll oh okay nice yeah, uh, and like yeah, honestly, there, there are specific times too where, like, say I scored on the blue net. If you get flown, I will purposely go backwards, you know, and say like I'm flying up the wall. A lot of the time, what you want to do is go horizontal with it, and then if you do a half flip, you can actually land like perfectly smoothly going wow, backwards. Okay. So, like, if you're ever in a kickoff scenario or whatever and you get scored on, if you're flying up the wall, 
you go horizontal and then do a half flip. See how I land perfectly like on the wall, wow. like, perfectly okay. on the ground. So that's one of those things that I've just kind of learned that I will actually do do backwards wave dash like that. You know, Bro, do like little flips. Yeah. So it's like all these like little things that do add up, right? Of being able to do a half yeah. flip and landing. You know, doing flip cancels or whatever. So that yeah, I've I've started to try to put those into my in-house gameplay, like wave dashes and uh, half flips, because I, I know the thing is I know how to do it. I just don't. Uh, it's kind of like what you said. When you feel nervous, you go back to what you know. Yeah. So you know, like <laughs> just the standard drift, turn, boost. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm like, I know how to do it. It's not hard. It's just I don't I don't do it. Um, so I've started to kind of incorporate that into in houses just so I can get a little more comfortable with it. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I really have to say. That's kind of like a lot of the, I know it was just supposed to be dribbling and stuff like that, but that's kind of like no, the it, gist it, of yeah. what that helps a lot because of... I mean, a lot of this, like, the thing is, like, on the, like, in general, like, game sense, I have, an, I have a pretty good idea. The coach that I had before was really, uh, adamant about that he did want me to do dribbling but i just yeah. like but i focused uh, the problem was is i really didn't have a sense of the game in general so i focused more on that right then because like if i figured if i could get if i could get to where i didn't have to put like uh, the majority of my attention towards what uh, my teammates and other players were doing then i could focus more on what i needed to do mechanically to get something done yeah for sure if, if that makes sense yeah um so uh, yeah, like game sense is high with me, but as far as like tricks that I can do, uh, zero. <laughs> sure, yeah, I gotcha. Uh, I was that way but... at first too, actually. Uh, you know, Kronovi was the one who inspired me to play, uh, like how I do today. You know, he was the guy who could do air roll and stuff like that all back in the day, and he would basically just score off the wall and basically just be doing like yeah. this and be flying, and then he would just score with like the side of his car, or the back side of his car. I'm like, oh damn, that's so cool. So, yeah. yeah, I know how it is. Just like everybody else, too. You know, I want to learn the fancy shit. I want to uh, I want to uh, score. I want to want to be the one on the ball. And, <laughs> and you know. Uh, like, and what really inspired me on the game since was uh, the coach that I had. He actually had played a couple games with Cookser. Ooh, damn. And, like, he showed me a snippet. Like, it, there was, like, a... As far as information goes, th there was probably five or six things that he had gathered within his mind right. within, like, two seconds. Right. And he immediately knew what to do. And I was like, he immediately knew that my coach was low on boost, that he was ahead of the ball. Right. And dude just, he, he hit it right where the big boost pad was. My coach caught it, got the big boost pad, then scored. Like, it was just so many things that went on. I'm like, bro, this is insane. How can you do that? Yeah, like, all the calculations yeah. within, like, exactly. a, of a second. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, dude's driving turns and, like, okay, this is exactly what we want to do. Boom, there's the ball. Yep. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's what that's what inspired me, and that's what really wanted me to go towards the game sense, was just, like, you know, and I, I knew that you could get pretty far if you had a lot of game sense, and so I, fo I just focused on that. But Ooh, uh, that was clean. Oh, that's dope. If only. <laughs> <laughs> Got the turtle air dribble. That was nice. Yeah. But again, a lot of even that stuff, dude, that I just did, it comes with being comfortable and pushing the ball around, right? <laughs> yeah. So it all exactly. just build, builds off of the stuff that I'm talking about. So yeah, all right, man. I don't think I have anything else. I can kind of. I feel like I'm. I can talk about Rocket League all day. Um, but do you have any other <laughs> questions or anything else or anything? No. Uh, no, that was, that's that's perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. If you have any questions about like, hey, you know, like, what do you think I should have done here or whatever? I know you said that like sometimes you tend to freak out about like or like you tend to question like hey well what do you think i should do you know if you ever wanted to go over like a replay or something like that feel free to hit me up all right yeah bet oh i can't score <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll take my leave <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> all right man i'll catch you later all right man i'll see you around i'm sure i'll see you you know in the server or whatever even later today or this weekend for sure all right sounds good man all right later all right